Hello, and welcome to a comprehensive tutorial for getting started with building aircraft in Flyout. Today I'll cover the fundamentals needed to build a simple aircraft such as the one shown on screen. Please note that some of the UI in the editor has changed between the time of recording and the latest dev branch, and it may continue to do so. Before we begin building, I'll cover the controls you will use in the editor. Hold right click to rotate the camera. Hold middle mouse and drag to move the camera horizontally. Hold left shift and drag with your middle mouse button to move the camera vertically. And scroll to move closer to or farther from the camera rotation point. Editor settings such as movement sensitivity and user interface scale can be found in the menu on the upper left. There are also additional camera options found under this camera icon which allow you to change projection mode, field of view, and rotation point manually. The camera position buttons are also bound to certain keys on your numpad as shown on the screen here. Next we have the ruler tool whose purpose is pretty self-explanatory. To use it, just move the two endpoints around and the ruler will tell you the distance and angle between them. Next we have blueprints. Blueprints can be imported to the editor using the menu on the left. This footage shows the old location for the button, but an updated location can be seen in this image here. A blueprint can be any PNG file you have saved on your computer, and it can be placed and scaled to your liking. For proper scaling, either use the ruler tool or remember that the squares in the editor have an edge length of 1 meter. The specifications window shows some of the physical metrics of your aircraft, such as size and weight. To start the building fundamentals section of this tutorial, I'll cover some of the tools that you'll be using. At the bottom of the screen there are three buttons. The first of these is the selection tool. Clicking on a part with this allows you to view and edit a part's properties in the pane on the right. The second button here is used to add new parts to your build. The last button is the paint tool, which allows you to freely paint over your plane as well as place custom decals. We'll come back to this, but I'll also make a more detailed video on it later. Selecting a part yields some additional buttons. To pick up a part, select it and then click the arrow button that appears at the bottom of your screen. With the part detached from your build, you have the option to delete it by clicking the red trash can icon. The second of these additional buttons will duplicate whatever part or subassembly you have selected. Speaking of subassemblies, the third additional button saves a subassembly based on whatever else is connected to the selected part. Next, I'll cover the tools in the bottom right of the screen. First we have the symmetry toggle, which can also be used by pressing the B key on your keyboard. Next is the angle precision button. This cycles through angle increments that are used in tandem with the rotation widget, which can be used by cycling through the third button on the lower right. Cycling further through the third button, we have the Scale Widget. This can adjust the individual X, Y, and Z axis scales of certain parts. The last button on the lower right switches between local and global frames of reference. This is useful if you want to align a part that is attached to something that has already been rotated, for example. Note that this also changes the values displayed in the Properties window in the upper right for position and rotation. Next we have the parts list which can be accessed by either having nothing selected or by pressing the arrow on the upper left of the properties window. The parts list can be used to highlight and select place parts 
which is really useful for finding smaller hidden pieces within your build. You can also rename a part by clicking its name at the top of the part property window. Let's briefly revisit the paint tool. Here you can adjust your brush settings, projection mode, and select your decals to place. Custom decals can be imported by dragging them into the folder in the file path on your screen. If you need to erase something you drew, just switch the tool option from paint to erase. To center a part on any of the X, Y, or Z axes, hold the letter key that corresponds to that axis. For example, holding X will center a part along the X axis, and so on. You can also rotate a part without the rotation widget by holding left shift and pressing W, A, S, D, Q, or E. Alright, now I'm going to get into the cross-section editor. This is one of the most powerful tools in the game and it allows you to freely shape parts of your aircraft in just about any way you can think of. To open it, press the open fuselage editor button on the right with a fuselage part selected. What you see here is a 2D projection of the cross-section you currently have selected. You can move between sections with the two arrows highlighted here. Newer versions of the game will let you select the loops in 3D space to make navigating between them easier. Dragging the points, or vertices, in the cross-section editor will move a corresponding point in the loop itself. Keep in mind that you need to have the Auto option enabled for your changes to occur in real time. Otherwise, you need to hit the Apply button every time you make a change. Points can be shifted towards or away from other loops by holding Z and X. This is useful for shaping holes in your plane such as the area around this cockpit. You can also slide the point directly with a 3D cross-section editor, which is still being tested, shown in the image here. The cross-section editor also has some built-in tools to help make shaping easier. If you want to straighten out a group of points, you can use the Straighten tool. Select multiple points by holding Shift and clicking them, or you can also click and drag. Remember to hit both Apply buttons when you're done making changes. You can also make your cross-section match certain shapes with a blend tool. Keep in mind that you aren't constrained to the set of shapes in the list it provides, as the blend tool will let you use whatever shape you have in your clipboard. You can save a shape in your clipboard by clicking the copy button in the upper middle of your cross-section editor. You can position two points directly on top of each other to mimic a single point by selecting multiple points and pressing M. This will place selected points over the first one you picked. You can move this group of points by holding shift and moving one of them around. A fuselage part can be split into multiple parts by selecting a section and pressing the split fuselage button. Beware that this cannot be undone, so save a copy of your vehicle before continuing. To add a new loop to the end of a fuselage, press the Extrude Fuselage button with an end section selected. If you want to add a loop between sections, press the Add Loop button and then click where you want the new section to be placed. You can also delete any section with the Delete Segment button once it's selected. You can scale individual cross sections by entering numbers for the X and Y axes in the Cross Section Editor window. You can also hold S and the corresponding axis key and drag your mouse to do the same thing. The controls for this can also be seen in the lower right of the screen. Just keep in mind that when you're using the number entering method that you have to hit the apply button to see your changes take place. The cross section can also be offset or rotated with the widgets or through the number entering method. Finally, you can assign materials to fuselage panels with the Assign Material button in the editor window. These are purely cosmetic. This is what you'll use to make glass or holes in your aircraft.
Next, I'll be covering the wing editor. To place a wing, grab it from the lift tab in the parts menu. This is what you'll be using to make your aircraft's main wings, stabilizers, canards, and other control or lifting surfaces. By default, the wing does not have leading or trailing edges attached to it, which will significantly hinder aerodynamic performance. Add a leading and trailing edge in the drop down menu on the right in the parts properties menu. Both the leading and trailing edges are individual parts and can be configured to act as control surfaces by viewing their properties and changing some of the values. If you don't want them to act as control surfaces, just leave the values at zero. Next, we will be shaping the wing. To do this, click the Open Wing Editor button on the main wing parts properties window. This will display a bunch of nodes that can be dragged around to shape the wing. To select multiple nodes at once, hold shift while left clicking the individual nodes. The wing editor also allows you to adjust the thickness of the airfoil by using the green vector as shown here. Note that the only airfoil available right now is symmetrical, meaning it will need to have an angle of attack to produce lift. Next, I will split the wing into multiple parts. This also splits the control surfaces, allowing different control surfaces to have different functions. For example, I will make the outboard control surfaces ailerons by adding roll response, and the inboard control surfaces flaps by giving them flap response. To split the wing, use the middle button at the bottom of your screen, then click along the wing where you want the split to be. Keep in mind that this cannot be undone. You can also add fuel tanks to wing sections with a fuel tank checkbox. You can select your fuel type and fill percentage. For turbine or ramjet powered aircraft, use Jet A for your fuel. Note that fuel tanks are also present in the cube, sphere, semi-sphere, and drop tank parts. Fuel priority can also be set for each tank, where a higher number will get drained first. The final chapter of this tutorial is a time lapse of a simple aircraft being constructed using what we learned today. If you were wondering where the engine section of this tutorial is, engines will be covered in separate videos because there is too much to cover to fit in this video. For your first builds, I recommend using a regular turbine jet engine as these are the simplest to set up and learn. As a side note, there are two stock aircraft in the game. I highly recommend taking a look at them and picking them apart to see how they are made. If you want, you can try to modify them as a building exercise before getting started on your first plane.
Once you've built your first aircraft, it is important to remember that it doesn't need to be perfect. Your first build will not be a masterpiece, and that's fine. If you continue to build aircraft, your skill will improve over time. If your first plane looks cool but doesn't fly well and you need help figuring out why, consider joining the official Flyout Discord server in the description.